Right, Madam Secretary, it's absolutely brilliant to be here with you. Thank you for the opportunity. And may I say, you know, I was wondering what pin you were going yes. to wear today. What does this mean, the pin on you? Well, first of all, for me, it's great to be with you and have a chance to see you again. So I decided it was a good day for hope and flowers. This is a dandelion, mm -hmm. and then when it becomes, you know, it poofs. So there's just a dandelion in two different stages, but it's basically, I love flowers, and it seemed like a good day to do that. Incredible. And you know, talking about hope, you, the entirety of your story, is the, is the ultimate dream. I read your book and I didn't know what part I loved most. No. It was just the fact that, you know, everything that you have done so far didn't look like it would ever have happened if you were looking at your, the way you were coming, which is why I'm going to ask this question. That, you know, from you to Colin Powell and then to Cond Condoleezza Rice, America has taken such huge, huge right. steps from electing a woman, from, from appointing a woman to appointing an African-American and then an African-American woman. So which is America ready for now, a female president or an African-American president? Well, you know, I'm supporting Hillary Clinton, so I do think that a female president is what we need. Uh, Barack Obama is a remarkable person. I've met him. I like him very much. Mm -hmm. But I really think uh, at this moment America needs an, a very experienced president. and. Uh, and I think it would be great to have Hillary. I really believe that. Talking about women, you know, uh, in, in such positions, um, Oprah recently in Iowa openly supported Barack Kabara. And everybody was um, wondering if the women's rank wouldn't be broken by such a public support from somebody who has the heart of the American women, well, women around the world. What well, I, I think we don't know. I think Oprah is also a, a remarkable person who is kind of a force of nature uh, in the United States. I've appeared on her show. We did a really interesting show together about trafficking in women. Mm -hmm. um, she gets very interested in an issue, and her support for issues or books uh, has been very important. We don't know what her effect on politics is. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a question. It is really a question. But I don't expect um, all women to vote for Hillary, nor do I expect all African Americans to vote for Obama. Wow, okay. So I think people will make up their minds according to what they see and want. I know, for instance, that Senator Clinton has remarkable support among African Americans, right. um, and they actually called President Clinton, the first black president. Yes. So I think that there'll be a number of issues where people will look at the issues, they will look at experience, and, and we'll have to see. Whoever becomes president, the next American president, is going to be a very important person because the world, actually, and to a large extent, America is at a very important place. Going forward, America needs to make the right decision in foreign policy for her economy in Iraq, on terrorism, and so on and so forth. Isn't that too much? Absolutely. Well, it's an incredibly difficult job, period, whenever you take it. But I think that it is especially important now, just because of the points you outlined. I mean, the United States is basically involved in two hot wars mm -hmm. uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq and the issues around those wars. In Afghanistan, Pakistan is an additional aspect of that. And in uh, Iraq, uh, the issue is what is the role of Iran? How do the Middle East peace talks move forward? Uh, every day you read about, uh, today for instance, uh, suicide bombers um, and Lebanon. And then I don't think people have paid enough attention to the rest of the world. I've criticized President Bush for being unilateral, but he's also unidimensional. Right. Not a lot of attention has been paid to Africa or Latin America, and uh, so the next president, I think, is going to have a huge job. Because it, it, it did seem that America you know, threw away the opportunity of 9-11, the sympathy. In fact, a lot of the work that you had done and the Clinton administration had done seemed you know, to have gone up in air in the last few years because America's at an all-time low in terms of national, international perception and so on and so forth. What would you do? I, for example, think you're very qualified to have been America's president. Well, that's another matter entirely. <laughs> I think you could have done a job like that. But what would you do if you were advising the next president about well, those issues, in particular the wars, terrorism, and America's economy? 
funny you should ask. I've just completed a book, which will be out in January, which is called A Memo to the President-Elect. Uh, and I have thought a lot about how I would advise a president. The reason that I wrote it now so that it would come out so early was that I hoped that it would help the public. It's not really a memo to the president. It's really a memo to the American public to understand how difficult it is and what the next president has to consider. I think from a national security perspective, I would first advise a president that we have to end the war in Iraq. It is sapping um, our energy. It has actually shown that our military strength is not as much as we think, even though our military is truly remarkable. It has not done uh, what we, what President Bush thought it would in terms of ending terrorism. In fact, Secretary Rumsfeld said that there were more terrorists created than had been killed. It has not done a lot for democracy because you can't impose democracy. It has to come. Uh, it's an oxymoron. Yeah, I totally. Say, yeah. An oxymoron. Absolutely. So um, I think first we have to deal with Iraq. But I also think that the next president has to uh, really take a different approach, one which understands that the issues of the 21st century are the kind that can only be solved by cooperation with others.